Welcome to High Performance LLC in Greenville, South Carolina. We've been here since 2013, and today we're going to give you a shop tour of our facility. We're going to start the VF4. We purchased this machine in 2017. Um, it, was a good, it was the first real professional machine we purchased. It had a large work area, large table, similar to a lot of the machines we had built before that were gantry and had large work areas. So it was a comfortable decision to step into. We have all the tool probes and tool setters. We have the umbrella tool holder because of the because of the ceiling height here. And because we're often working alone, we have a, a my fourth axis is on a beam in the attic, so I can raise and lower it quickly on the tables for different setups. It's got a lot of chips in it because we run it every day. Next is our ST20Y. This is a Y-axis lathe. It has a sub-spindle. We run some parts on it earlier. We can use this to bar feed second operations, other things like that. It has all the live tooling, and I bought a lot of extra live tool holders with it when I bought the machine. Uh, I wasn't much of a lathe person, so more mill features on it, the better. During COVID, we purchased a five axis maze act. It has to be off because it makes so much noise, it'd be impossible to film around it. This machine is pretty cool. And one thing that we really try to do with our customers is if we're doing multiple pieces, then we have to have a base to hold one part by, we'll design it so the piece is left over for the base. We can go larger to a standard size material and we can allow this base to become the next part of the component. It saves a lot of time with saw cutting because you're only cutting one blank and you're getting multiple pieces out of it. It saves cost on material because you're not scrapping the extra little piece that you hold with the when you mill and put a flange on. So it's kind of nice. Saves a lot of saves a lot of cost. Here in the middle of the machines we have the band saws, the belt sanders, the pole sanders, the polishers, or several of them. We have more elsewhere, but these are kind of I can quickly unplug these and move these around for what I need. This in the setup allows me to take something out of the machine. If we're, if we're having multiple ops in different machines, quickly we'll cut off a tab, polish off one little edge so it fits better in a set of soft jaws or something like that, and walk it over to the next machine in one motion. It saves a lot of time. This big large metal table here I use for my 3D scanning, my drawing things up, prepping up for jobs, uh, stacking up material that needs to go into a machine. It's the steel table in the middle of CNC because it's it gets used for about everything. Um, one large part of what I do that has really helped us grow is in when I first got into machining, I bought a 3D scanner, and this is our second scanner. This is an Artec Leo. It's fully wireless. The 3D scanning really helps me. By I can go mobile on a site, scan something to fit something fit existing features, fit around clearances, or copy an existing part. This is nice with the, I do a lot of on-call work for factories where something may break, it's a complete one-off piece. By the time the, com the company has it torn down, I've already scanned it, brought the piece, brought the scan home, made a new piece, and I have it back at the factory by ready for first shift. It's kind of my favorite work. It's really rewarding and getting to see the people aspect of keeping other people working. This is my computer desk. Um, I use Fusion 360. I also use Fusion the lowest screen. And then on the top screens, I can have an email with the customer or something where they're giving me information for something. On the other side, I can have reference material. I can have charts I need to look up. I can have anything I need to use in the design of it. So I can one quick glance, get everything I need, and design something with less reworks or less, ver less versions of a design. Fusion 360 has a lot of good tools, and I like to use all the tools, so I'm always watching a tutorial if a new tool comes out. 
so I can make sure that I'm using that feature correctly. I have all my computers here on a network so I can draw something up, program it up, drag and drop, post it to it, walk over to the machine, hit start, I'm ready to go. It saves a lot of time. You don't have to walk back and forth with the flash drives and everything else like that. It saves a lot of time. Behind the computer area is a manual milling area. I have my knee mill. I have my old Monarch NWE round dial. I bought this machine sight unseen. I was told somebody had an old lathe. They wanted a certain amount of money for it. I said, that sounds like a good deal for an old lathe. I was hoping for a South Bend 9 inch at least, or maybe something. I could have been a rusty Chinese machine for that price. When this showed up on the trailer, is what the, the machine the older gentleman had. I was quite thrilled to get a Monarch 10 double I have my electronics workbench. Um, you know, has all, a lot of scopes and microscopes and soldering things and hot air guns. Uh, this is also my big granite table for my metrology. I can keep all my equipment in the drawers below I built, and I can do different setups for that. Currently, I'm making some electronic components, so set up for this allows you to put everything on the shelf, get the things out, be flexible. On the other side of the computer, what used to be the bathroom for the shop, I put injection mold machines in. And who wouldn't rather have injection mold machines in a bathroom? <laughs> um, I have still more features this machine I've been setting up. Uh, I have a smaller one over here, and um, I have done some small part runs on these. They're pretty cool. It's something I'm definitely learning and getting more into, and I think it's definitely a main direction I'm going to go more with in the future for solving certain problems. Kind of uh, less injection molded. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Walking more down the middle of the shop, I have my to-do list for the week. This is a long table with rubber mat. At the end is my welding table and at this end is the things that come out of the five axis. So uh, if I need, if I have something come in or even a package come in, it goes on this table and I know oh, this is my to-do list. Uh, depending on how crowded the table is, I know how busy my week is. Um, I have casters for, I'm putting on some machines here to make them more mobile. I have some parts, I have some frames I need to machine pieces for and I have some parts maybe cleaning up to go ship. On this wall, I have my battery chargers. They're an easy access to the welding table and everything. That's where you use a lot of hand tools, drills, and grinders. I have all of my power tools and battery power tools hanging. Um, on this end, I have my whiteboard. If I'm working on a post processor or something, I can make notes of what I want to change. And this is more for longer term. Memory, when I don't want to have to commit to memory, I can say this is what I need to handle. So I have a um, time clock I use for uh, customer projects when things are built by the hour. You can clock in, clock out, you track your hours to a T. It's nice when you can a customer uh, time, time stamp list with what you did and you can make notations on what you were working on at what time so they can see where the work went and um, what the challenges of the project were. Kind of all around the shop, I have vacuum molds in various storage places. We're trying to build a place to store all those. This is my chop saw table. Um, it was clean earlier today, but we've had to use it. Uh, this has three printed holders for my um, tree sticks, and a little steel wool also goes in that. Um, I have a different chop saw that fits here, but I got this one out for a very specific reason. For some stainless, and those blades are cheaper when you wear them out stainless. This is all bolted down. This is my aluminum saw. It's an aluminum blade. It has a negative rake on the blades on the carbide, so you can chop aluminum. I cut a lot of solid pieces of aluminum, and we just this allows me to. It's deep enough that I, for heavier things that I don't necessarily want to lift by myself, or even, even larger pieces that sometimes I can't. I can get them up here, cut a few pieces off, roll it back for a couple days while I do some other things. If I need more of that, I can put it back up. It's kind of um, short term. That same week, oh, I need to do more of this, but I'm doing something else right now. Standing here at the other end of my to-do list, to-do list table, 
I have the, my, I like adding plugs to anything I need in the summertime, so we plug a lot of fans in. Uh, I can have my tape loaders plugged in. I can, it allows me to keep the machines close to where I'm working. This is my main welding table. It's small. You can't have a lot of stuff on it. It keeps you focused on what you're working on. I have several different work heights with this table, this table, and the two different height vices that I can get comfortable with any welding position or whatever I'm building, and we can be able to do a nice quality job or have, have the, be able to get, get in there and see the detail. Behind the high working table, I keep some of my roll carts things. This is my oxy acetylene setup, big welder, a uh, table saw. Everything's on wheels, but the wheels lock so I can roll this out into the common area, use it, put it back. We're doing the same, this, this is what the caches are for, we're doing the same with all the big belt sanders, so we can roll these in a little tighter and make a little more walking room. We have a lot of cabinets, steel ring tools, all around the edges, anywhere they'll fit. This is our newest machine. This is, this got his first test piece cut today. So this is a five axis, um, Gantry mill, it has the vacuum table, Nimi pod system, probing. All of our machines use probes because I put probe cycles in everything I do. I roughly position a part, I write a probe cycle. I um, have probe cycles checked before specific. If you have a lot of end mill work done with in, eighth inch end mill and you're going back with a quarter inch ball nose to clean it up, I have the probe go check first. So we're running lights out, I'm not going to break anything. Um, this machine. This machine has a 12 tool tool changer. It's got these cool little soft bumps um, that shut it off when it's running. If you bump it into something, the table actually moves a really far distance. Um, it's a brand new machine. We're gonna learn it. We're gonna learn the quirks about it, and we're gonna make a lot of parts on it. We mainly bought this because of our vacuum forming. We'll show those machines in a minute, but. Um, I wanted to be able to trim more complex parts. We had a three axis, five by 10, dual spindle machine that we had bought that was an older machine that we retrofitted with more modern controls. And it was pretty great, but it didn't have enough Z height really for what I wanted to do. And we were using slitting saws to cut out the parts. So we didn't really have the Z control for complex curvatures. And we couldn't drill holes at weird angles. With this corner is some of the messy machines. We got the grinders and we have the plasma machine. We built this machine eight years ago. It's a eight foot by 12 foot table. It allows me to put half sheets of half inch and quarter inch of it up and keep them at the back. I can still use eighth inch, 16 gauge, all that kind of stuff up here at the front, cut it out and I don't have to ask for help when I need to cut some one or two brackets that are larger or thicker material because I can just cut it out of the larger sheets that I keep on the table at the back. The larger table definitely helps when you're a you know, husband and wife team shop and sheets are really heavy. The control on this machine is uh, in a school locker. I bought this at a yard sale. And, um, it's run XP now, but when we first built it, it had Windows 2000. And so, when one of the first upgrades we did to the machine was, I got rid of the um, pillow block kind of bearings that it was sliding on because those were just getting eaten up by the plasma debris. And I went to these large aluminum wheels. I machined the aluminum wheels to look like the old uh, black and silver the swirly wheels from the 90s. So it's a 90s electronics, 90s technology, and you got some 90s wheels on it. This is our home built vacuum former. This does four full four by eight sheets, ABS. It can do some thick materials. It can pull a lot of detail in. I have a lot of vacuum force. The sheets clamp here. The table is hydraulics. It can use very heavy molds. Uh, I have electronics and end cabinets. I have extra tanks. This machine used to be out there on the main floor, but we moved it to make room for the new five axis. So it's in here and we're getting it set up and ready to run again. So we have all This is a new to me vacuum former we got from a company in Atlanta.
I'm not sure what they made with it, but it's really flexible machine. It's a smaller work area. It allows me to, it has dividers and other things with it that allows me to quickly convert and use it for small molds and small vacuum form things. This was something that when we were planning to get the new five axis mill, we wanted this so that way we could really make smaller pieces more economically. The other machine I have is very good for uh, four by eight sheet, full sheets of thick material, but this is a lot more flexible for small things. It just These are a bunch of my sheet metal machines. So the pull max that keep the dedicated shrinking dies on it. Good for sheet metal forming work, um, sheet metal shaping work. <laughs> Uh, this is a roller I built that can roll up to quarter inch aluminum. It's great for when your cut wheels in half and wide them. This is a uh, bead roller. This is a power hammer, good for stretching. Also, works great for some um, toenail dies. Toenail dies and uh, shrinks the metal. You can really make some nice panels with these. I have an English wheel with a bead roller and then a rubber wheel for forming long curves. This is my more general purpose uh, pull max. Uh, we see and see cut different dies for forming wheel lips and all sorts of specialty sheet metal things. Got a lot of extra parts around here because a lot of this stuff is for the vacuum system that's going to go on the new 5 axis. This is our shop. Spent a lot of time in here. A lot of fun. Okay. One of the things that has really made life easiest for us is the small things, the logistical things around the shop. Um, there's a lot of stuff with owning a shop that takes extra time that you don't think about when you're first getting into this kind of things. And you don't think about it as a problem until you come up with a solution for it and you realize, why didn't I always do that? Uh, one of the best things we ever did was we bought a person a large dump trailer. It has the cylinder at the front so we can load this thing up with a ton of metal and take it to the scrap yard. Um, I'm just able to fill it with the chips. We just dumped it yesterday, so there's not very many in it today. Um, you know, you can, you, you can dump a bunch of chips in there and uh, haul it off and that saves so much time. I also have uh, goose thing trucks and trailers and all different size trailers for moving different things when we build things for people or we build a machine for somebody. It's nice to be able to just go put it on our own trailer, get it all ready, prep it for the load, not have to stress about using other people. And other things that have made life easier is having a bobcat with forks on it. I have a lot of different attachments for this thing and just taking care of them around the shop. It makes it a lot easier when you have to move or unload heavy steel that can buy material in larger pieces, not cut. And it gives me the flexibility with if I want to change the stock size after designing a part, I can do that here instead of having to worry about buying a bunch of pre-cuts. Um, I have an excavator that we actually use like a crane <laughs> whenever we're putting something on a trailer or we're assembling something that has machine components that need to go on something. Uh, it gets used a lot more than you would realize, and uh, maybe one day we'll have a crane. But uh, for now, the escalator works good for that. It's my wife, Shelly, and our ducks. We'd like to thank you for visiting our shop and for joining us on this tour. We'd like to thank Practical Machinists for having us. And uh, if you're in the area and you need work done, you can look us up on Google. And uh, we're always looking for good challenges.